Hi, this is Kirk from livingafield.com. I'd like to welcome you to our video learning series, The Plants That Surround Us. Plants can have many common names. All too often, though, the same common name is used for multiple plants. As you may imagine, this can become rather confusing. One of these plants is an edible and medicinal powerhouse. The other is the most toxic plant in North America. Unfortunately, they are both commonly called hemlock. You can see how mistaking the two might cause a very serious problem. To eliminate any confusion, we use botanical names. They are always Latin, not just because using them makes us sound highly intelligent, which of course it does, <laughs> but also because Latin is a dead language, and as such, it does not evolve. The plant we're going to talk about today is bearberry. Barely, yes, but I like it too. The botanical name of bearberry is Arctostaphylos uva ursi. This is a picture of bearberry. Common names are uva ursi, red bearberry, foxberry, upland cranberry mountain cranberry, crowberry, mealberry, and kinnikinick. It ranges all over the northern United States and then the western United States down to New Mexico and Arizona. It is a member of the Ericaceae or Heath family. This is a small woody Procumbent evergreen. Procumbent simply means that it's growing along the ground. It doesn't typically grow high. Um, this plant grows in dense clusters and is often mistaken by novice foragers for wintergreen. Although once you're familiar with both plants, it is easy to tell them apart. The leaves of uva ursi are much smaller than those of wintergreen. The plant is typically two to six inches tall. The broad evergreen leaves are approximately a half an inch wide and about an inch long. They are dark shiny green on the top with pale light green underneath. The individual leaves have a rounded end which tapers back to the stem. This gives them a teardrop shape. They are arranged alternately along the stem and they feel thick, stiff, and almost leathery. In fall, the leaves change from dark green to a reddish green to purple. The stems are long, flexible, and woody. They trail along the ground and they do tend to layer, meaning that one stem will grow over top of another. If the plant is growing in full sun, the newer stems may be red in color. If, however, the plant is growing in shade, the stem will be green. Younger stems are pubescent, meaning that they're covered with fine hairs. The color of the stems is white to pale green as the plant ages, the stems will become smooth and turn a brownish red. The stems of the oldest plant will actually become brown. Singular roots produce each woody stem. Longer trailing stems will periodically produce small additional roots. This does give the plant a layered appearance. The plant flowers in mid-spring to early summer. The perfect terminal clusters of small urn-shaped flowers are white to pink. You can see they're very, very pretty. I love how they turn down like that. Small, round, mealy, bright red to pink fruits called droops replace the flowers of spring. This smooth, glossy skin fruit will range from a quarter to about a half an inch in diameter and will remain on the plant into early winter. Some fruit not eaten by woodland creatures will remain until the following spring. Uh, as I said earlier, these fruits are mealy, uh, and that's putting it mildly. Um, they're not very palatable, but if they overwinter, they'll absorb moisture from the snow, and that will make them more palatable. Each fruit or droop can contain up to five hard seeds. This plant is classified as circumpolar, meaning that it tends to congregate around the poles. You won't find it anywhere along the equator. 
It prefers moist, fertile soils in northern latitudes. The farther you proceed south, the plant will only grow at really high altitudes. The common name Kinnikinnik is an Algonquin word meaning mixture. This refers to the fact that it was often mixed with other plants and used as a smoking blend. The parts used are the leaves and the berries. While the leaves and berries are technically edible, I do not find either palatable. There are many more delicious choices available in the same areas, so I tend to use this plant only for its medicinal purposes. The following slides are meant for informational purposes only. They are not meant to diagnose or treat any illness or injury. Always consult with a physician or other qualified medical care provider concerning the diagnosis and treatment of any illness or injury. I want to be perfectly clear. I am not a physician and I do not play one on the internet. With that being said, this plant shines medicinally. It is wonderfully antimicrobial, mildly diuretic, and strongly astringent. It has been used for urinary tract complaints, including cystitis and urolithiasis. An infusion may be made by soaking the leaves in ethanol and then diluting with water. Before the introduction of sulfa drugs and modern antibiotics, uva ursi was among the few herbal drugs with antibacterial properties. This plant is antimicrobial in action, meaning that it helps the body destroy or resist pathogenic organisms. It is antiseptic, uh, inhibits the growth of bacteria, and prevents infection, putrefaction, cell decay, and pus formation. It is astringent. It has a binding action on the skin or mucous membranes that help dry up mucus discharge, tone local blood vessels and varicosities, and stop bleeding. It is diuretic, meaning that it increases the formation and flow of urine. It is lithotriptic, means that it helps dissolve and eliminate urinary and biliary stones and gravel. Uva ursi has no toxic lookalikes, and I'm not aware of any drug interactions concerning uva ursi. As always, though, you should consult with a physician or other qualified medical professional prior to starting any herbal supplement. Arctostaphylos uva ursi is a plant with a rich history of medicinal use. I hope you get out into the natural world and harvest some for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this course. If so, please try one of our other online courses. You might also be interested in one of our guided plant walks. You can find all of our training opportunities on our website at livingafield.com. I would appreciate you taking a moment and emailing me your feedback on this video to videos at livingafield.com. Thanks a lot and have a wonderful day.